Okay, Houston, right. we've, had, we've had a problem here. Please. Isn't chemistry awesome? Today what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called the ammonia fountain. So I have with me some concentrated ammonium hydroxide. This is nasty stuff. And what I'm going to do is I need to, I need to collect some ammonia gas to do this experiment. So the, the cool part of the experiment comes later, but I've got to get some ammonia gas. Now you could get ammonia gas like from a tube, but if you've got some concentrated ammonia, what you could do is you can have a flask and get this tube and this tube goes up into this flask right here. Um, and then I can collect the ammonia, stopper it, and that's how we'll proceed. So let's watch that. So this is where the ammonia fountain is going to take place. I've got a stopper here with a long uh, piece of glass in it. And I've got a small uh, dropper pipette. And I'm going to fill that with water. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that there's two holes. So I'm just going to fill this with water, just squirt it with water insert it into the other hole of the stopper. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flask right here, right? I'm gonna put it inside the, the, uh, the, the ring stand. Now, now this, this large flask is filled with water and I put a few drops of phenothaline in there. We'll explain the chemistry of it afterwards. So th remember, what's the, in this flask is ammonia gas, almost completely ammonia gas. So it's quite sticky, right? So, Now that was cool, right? You saw, because of the solubility of ammonia gas into water, it created the ammonia fountain. Now the color, by the way, ammonia is a base. And since the acid base indicator phenothaline was in the big flask below, that's why it turned uh, pink. Let's, let's look at it molecularly to totally understand why this happened. So here's the apparatus that we had, right? And uh, the little red dots here is the ammonia gas in the flask above, and then we've got water down here. Now, if you recall back to just understanding the water, if you don't know, this is good to know. Water is a bent uh, structure, and it's polar, because if you, uh, the most electronegative atom between here is the oxygen. So the oxygen is considered partially negative, and that makes the uh, hydrogens partially positive. That little funny looking s -y thing is partial. And if you were to find the center of the two, the center of the positive here, the center of the negative is here. And so that makes this molecule basically a little magnet, or we say it's polar, right? If we draw the Lewis structure of ammonia, ammonia is a pyramidal structure, so it's NH3. Because you have these extra two valence electrons right here, what that is, and then of course this then becomes uh, the partially negative, and this, the partially positive is down between the base of this pyramid. But what happens is because they're both polar, not only are they just both, this is also polar, right? But they are also polar and you've got O to H and N to H, it actually makes a hydrogen bond. So what happens is that you can get a bond, a dashed line here, so it's a dashed line, it's not a full bond, it's not like a covalent bond, it's, a, it's called a hydrogen bond. Uh, so that's a H bond. And so when the ammonia, so once you squirt the water into the flask, the ammonia and the water have this super, like they love each other, <laughs> like, ah, oh, I own water. And they start dissolving. But when they start to dissolve, what happens is a little one goes off and an off. And what happens is they keep, you keep having less and less ammonias. Boom, all these start disappearing. And when they start disappearing, what happens is the pressure in the flask goes down, which is creating a vacuum up here, right? And when you have a vacuum, what can then happen is that the air pressure that's pushing down on the water can push up the tube and into the flask, 
and it makes the ammonia fountain. And of course, you might, if you noticed in the in the video, what happens is it got very, very fast once it reached the top, because now there's lots and lots and lots of water for it to dissolve into, and the reds go away fast, fast, fast. And of course, eventually this whole thing fills up with the phenothaline embedded water. Uh, remember, there was phenothaline down here, and that's how the ammonia fountain 